Maybe you saw the meditation in the Word Among Us for today's Gospel. The author asked the question, how did the rich man do it? How did the rich man leave his house with Lazarus there at the front door? Did he have a servant who would shoo Lazarus away whenever he wanted to leave the house? Did he walk around outside with his eyes looking towards the sky? I can't see him, he can't see me. And how many times did the rich man step over Lazarus on his way to somewhere else? And I'll add to the meditation, how many times do we step over someone else on the way somewhere else? Hey friends, welcome to Sipping on the Sabbath. I'm uh, Father Alan. I came across this very interesting mug recently. If you can see that, it says, On the eighth day, God made coffee. Praise God for that. So Regis Martin, who is an American scripture scholar, professor, he uh, sums up today's gospel in one sentence. Mercy deferred is mercy denied. Now, the church is not against private Property. We do not subscribe to communism. The church encourages us and allows us to, to work hard, uh, be prosperous, to be industrious, to gain wealth, to gain possessions, and have possessions and have wealth. The question is, what do we do with it? And that's what the, all the readings today really spur us on to consider. What am I doing with the wealth that I have, am I using it to benefit others? Am I using it to be merciful to others, generous to others? Or am I keeping it all for myself? Mercy deferred is mercy denied. So again, I've said this to you so many times and I'll say it again. It's important for us to see a scripture in its proper context. And we are continuing to go through Amos, the prophet Amos, the Old Testament. We're continuing to look at the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. And of course, in this year C, we are looking at the Gospel of Luke. So I want to uh, point out a couple of different scripture references, one of which we have in today's uh, first reading from Amos. The prophet Amos says that they were lounging on their couches. <laughs> None of you are lounging on your couch as you're listening to this podcast or watching this podcast. It's time to sit up straight, pay, pay attention. The Lord has something to say. But what Amos is really getting at is the criticism against the idle rich who were living their indolent lifestyle, again, oblivious to the needs of others or even oblivious to the finite reality of each of our lives. And then, of course, we have in the second reading today from the first letter of Paul to Timothy, two particular verses, one of which, both actually of which are not in the excerpt that we have for today's Mass. But again, it's important to look at a couple of verses ahead, a couple of verses after. It's all about looking at the big picture, right? And in his letter to Timothy, Paul says, this is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, the love of money is the root of all evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced their heart with many pangs. And then towards the end, or a few verses after <clears throat> the excerpt we have in today's second reading, so we're, we're looking at verses 17, 18, and 19. St. Paul, in writing to his spiritual son, Timothy, says, As for the rich, charge them not to be haughty, but to set their hopes on God who richly furnishes. They are to be rich in good deeds, so that they may take hold of the life which is life indeed. And then when it comes to the gospel, we're looking again at Luke chapter 16. There's uh, one verse in particular, verse 14, that is 
not included today, nor was it included last Sunday. And for some reason that only God knows the answer to, our American brothers and sisters had verse 14 in the proclamation of the gospel they heard at Mass last Sunday, but we didn't. But verse 14, again, putting the whole thing in proper context, says, The Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. Now, I don't even know, how, can, how do we even make it like a sneering face? Like, what's it even look like? Kind of like the lip goes up or kind of the, the, kind of the eyes kind of, you know, looking up the side of your head. I, I sneering, right? So I actually looked up sneering. <laughs> I googled it and found two images. Sneering could be this. Sneering can also be this. FYI, I am not related to any of these or either of these uh, fellows, although perhaps you could see a little bit of a, a little bit of a facial resemblance or even a attitudinal similarity <laughs> between me and these two characters. But anyway, that's what the Pharisees were doing. They were sneering at Jesus, talking about this parable of those who, who love money. So now on to today's gospel. So get your Bibles out. And if you haven't done so already, get yourself a coffee or some other caffeinated beverage. I'm going to stick with coffee uh, today. My voice is kind of <clears throat> raspy. I think it's just the allergies or something. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'm not sick or anything. I just like this kind of raspy voice. But that's why uh, coffee for me is such a good uh, soother in my life. <laughs> So, Luke uh, chapter 16, we're going to look at verses 19 to 31. And there's so much in this gospel passage. I just want to take it a couple, couple of words at a time and stop and, and make a point or two. So, the gospel says, there was a rich man. Notice we're not told what his name is. So, this no-name character who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously. Was he alone doing that? Was he with friends? Who was he with? Showing off to his uh, servants. This guy's, you know, pulling off uh, Henry VIII uh, every day of his life. Selfish, self-satisfied, every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus. Now, that's interesting. He is known by name. Not anonymous, but known by name personally. And Lazarus, the name Lazarus means the one whom God has helped. And so Lazarus is there, covered with sores, the gospel says, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the master's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. What a beautiful image. Beautiful image of pastoral care and concern that the Lord has for this humble, poor servant, brother of his Lazarus. The rich man also died and was buried. This is like so final, so cold, so barren, just the end of his life. In Hades, where he, the rich man, was being tormented, he lifted up his eyes. Notice how the roles have changed. He who would look down upon Lazarus, who laid at his doorstep, he who would step over Lazarus on his way somewhere else now looks up and sees Lazarus. The roles have changed. And saw Abraham far away with Lazarus at his side. And he, he called out. The rich man, he calls out. So now, oh yeah, now I need help. Now I need assistance. Now, my friend Lazarus, help me. 
Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus. So the rich man, he actually knew Lazarus's name. This guy who would lay at his doorstep covered with sores that the dogs would lick, whom he ignored, he knew the guy's name, which makes his, his sin of omission even that much more serious. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, child, he's referred to by his identity, called by his identity. And it's too bad this rich man didn't remember that when he was living his earthly life. And to understand that Lazarus was also a child of God. In fact, they were brothers in the name of God. Remember that during your lifetime, you received good things, and Lazarus, in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Again, the circumstances have switched. He who was living this glorious, self-indulgent lifestyle, feasting sumptuously every day, now is in agony, and he who was in agony is now comforted in the arms of Abraham. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed. It's final. Finality. There is no remedial exam in hell. There's no way out. You don't get out after a while on good behavior. So that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so. And no one can cross from there to us. So it speaks about the permanence of the afterlife. He said, Then I beg you, Father, to send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Now he needs Lazarus' help. Before, no way self-satisfied, self-indulgent, that he may warn them. Now, all of a sudden, he's concerned about the welfare of others so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets, they should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. If they would not listen to Moses and the prophets, teaching them the way to a virtuous life, the way to live a life in union with God, then some damned, condemned soul coming to them from the afterlife would not convince them either. He said, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. So, so much in this gospel, this parable that Jesus teaches to those who love money, who are sneering, kind of trying to imitate the sneer, kind of kind of like <laughs> sneering at Jesus for saying this. Now, the question is big, well, why was Lazarus seen in the arms of Abraham and not some other well-known Old Testament figure? It's because Abraham, in Scripture, was the number one hospitality and concern for others guy. If you want to look up the story of Abraham and Sarah, who had a visit from the Lord, who presented himself in three persons coming to their tent. This is Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 to 15. Abraham and Sarah put out a nice big spread for these uh, three uh, visitors, offered them rest, offered them hospitality, offered them comfort, even though they were strangers. And the Lord, in his goodness, rewarded Abraham, who became the father of many nations, and Sarah, even though she and Abraham uh, were quite old at the time, she conceived and bore a son who was Isaac. And so, Lazarus is in the arms of this man who's so hospitable, so caring for the stranger. And St. John Chrysostom had or has a beautiful reflection on today's gospel about this hospitality. He says that the sight of Lazarus with Abraham 
was meant to reproach the rich man and his own inhospitality. Abraham used to pursue even passers-by and drag them into his home, whereas the rich man disregarded someone lying in his own doorway. We do something truly great and admirable when we give a most courteous welcome to all, even the outcasts of society and people of humble condition. This gospel passage, coupled with the, the readings from Amos and again our continuation through Paul's first letter to Timothy, is a hard one and teaches us a couple of, of hard but yet truthful truths uh, of the gospel. And the first is that our soul will live forever. That our soul will outlive the death of our bodies. And the second truth that this gospel and the combined readings teach us is that there will be a judgment when we die. And no one will be able to escape the judgment of God. Again, going back to Regis Martin, he talks about a university professor who would say to his students on the first day of class, if you come to class every day, when it comes time for the final exam, I will remember mercy. If you only come to class when you want to, or if you need something, or you don't bother to come to class at all, when it comes time for the final exam, I will remember justice. Mercy or justice? I want to live my life in conformity with the will of God. I want to live my life in such a way that the blessings that I have been given as a result of the gifts that I have been given, I want to use them not just for my own self-satisfied purpose, but to benefit others. The conversation in the gospel is meant to stir us to an examination of our conscience and to ask ourselves an important question. And the question is this, where do I want to spend eternity? Because my choices, my decisions, my responses in life, they will determine this. Why is that? Well, it's like C.S. Lewis said, that God has paid us the intolerable compliment of taking seriously the choices that we make. The choices that we make in our life will determine where we spend eternity. And God will honor the choices that we have made. If we choose to live a self-satisfied, self-indulgent, self-focused life with care and concern only for oneself, dismissing God, not living in conformity with his will, he is not going to force us to spend the rest of eternity, which is forever. There is no kind of rest of eternity. Eternity is just eternity, forever and ever and a day. Amen. Alleluia. He's not going to force us to be with him forever. He's going to honor the decision that we made. The rich man, he accumulates all of his wealth, all of his riches, wanting others again to see it but was blind to the presence, the need of Lazarus who was, was at his own doorstep. All the times he stepped over Lazarus on the way to somewhere else. Do we step over someone on the way to somewhere else in our own life? The psalm that we have today from 146 says, The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. And so we come before the Lord today asking for new sight. Lord Jesus, just take away the blinders that we have vis-a-vis -vis the needs of others. Take away the blinders that we have, Lord, about how we think we're just so, so okay with ourself and failing and forgetting and not even seeing the reality 
of how much we are in need of your grace, Lord Jesus. And so we pray, Lord Jesus, and ask you to enlighten us. To whom have I deferred, or to whom am I deferring mercy today? Lord, help me to see. Am I caught up in my own false sense of self-sufficiency? Heal me of this blindness, Lord. Heal me of the blindness, Lord Jesus, that prohibits me from seeing again just how dependent upon you that I am. And also, we, we pray the Lord give us that insight to accept and appreciate how humble it is that when we see someone, a beggar, someone asking for help, first of all, you know, when, when I'm approached by somebody, am I generous? And in my generosity, do I actually look the person in the eye? In imitation of Pope Francis, I've got into the habit of asking individuals their name because they are a person. They are someone's daughter, someone's son, someone's brother, someone's niece, someone's mother, someone's aunt, someone's uncle. They have a family of origin. They are people. They're persons with flesh and blood just like we are but when i see individuals who are begging and asking for help do i in all humility say god but by your grace there i am mercy deferred is indeed mercy denied so let us pray so Lord Jesus, as usual, we thank you for the gift of today, the gift of each day, Lord Jesus, and the many blessings and graces, Lord, that you are showering down upon us, even in the uncertainties and the difficulties of life that we may experience and are experiencing. We pray a blessing, Lord, upon each person watching this video or listening to the podcast that you would hear the cries, Lord Jesus, of each of our hearts that we present to you, Lord Jesus, our personal intentions, those of our families, our friends, the world, the church, Lord. We pray especially for anyone listening or watching who is carrying a particular heavy burden in their life, that you would right now, Jesus, minister to their heart. Remind them, Lord, that you are always with them. We pray also, Lord, for anyone who is drifted far away from you from the sacrament of confession that you would lord jesus gently just call them back to yourself make it possible lord for them to have this life-changing transforming experience of knowing in a very real tangible way the power of your forgiveness in the sacrament of reconciliation lord and lord jesus help us to be generous with all that you have entrusted us with what you have endowed us with lord jesus we thank you lord for the gift of ingenuity for our industry for our intelligence for all the gifts lord that have allowed us to do well in life help us remember lord that they are indeed gifts from you we want lord jesus to be men and women who are truly generous in helping others helping alleviate their unfortunate state, Lord. Help us, Lord, never to take you for granted. Help us never to take our health, our possessions, our money, anything for granted, Lord Jesus. Help us remember, Lord, just how perilous and just how dependent we really are, Lord. It's all grace, Lord. It's all grace. Thank you, Lord, for your for blessing us in so many different ways. And we want to be a blessing to others, Lord. So help us, Lord Jesus, never to forget that but by the grace of God, when I see someone in a very dire state, there I am. Help us, Lord, not to defer mercy so that we can indeed be people who receive your mercy. Make this prayer in your name, Jesus, through the power of the intercession of our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, all the angels and saints, and our own particular patron saints. Amen.
And may Almighty God bless each of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless the rest of your day. Stay caffeinated. And remember, when we're powerless, that's when we're strong. And victory is indeed gained through surrender. Bye-bye.